When you're adding several terms together, it's often useful to use something called sigma notation. And it's aptly named, of course, because here we have the Greek letter sigma, right? So we call it sigma notation, capital sigma for S, for sum. So in this case, we have the sum, and we'd say k equals 1 to n of x sub k. So this k is the index. It's often also written as i or j, so kind of i, j, k are the indexes that we commonly see. The equals 1 part tells us where we start. So in this particular sum, we're starting at 1, and the n tells us where to stop. Okay, and then x sub k is some formula involving k's. Okay, so how this works is you start it at 1, and you put 1 into the formula, and see what that gives you, and essentially log that, and then you put 2 into the formula, see what that gives you, and add it, and then put 3 into the formula, see what that gives you, and add that, 4 into the formula, see what that gives you, add that, and so on and so on and so on, until you hit whatever stopping point you have here. Now, this n up here can be infinity. We see that often in Calc 2. Right, we're dealing with infinite sums all the time there. So these need not be finite creatures. So let's try it out. Okay, so here are a couple of examples. It says write in sigma notation, and part A gives 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus dot dot dot, which means we just keep going, plus 100. All right, so that's pretty cumbersome to write. Okay, well, we can see that it's essentially going by twos here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So let's see here. So we write our sigma notation. So there's our sigma. And let's start it at 1. And I'll use k for my index. k equals 1 to something. And how about we do 2k? There we go. So we put in 1, we get 2. We put in 2, we get 4. We put in 3, we get 6. So we're, we're looking good here. The next question is where to stop it. Well, I think we should stop it at 50, right? Because 2 times 50 would give us 100, and that's where we want to stop. And there you have it. It's a nice, compact way of representing this sum. And you can imagine as our sums get larger and larger, we definitely want to use a more compact notation. But wait. Is this the only way of writing this sum? No, it's not. What if we wanted to start it at 0? OK, so there's our sum again. And now I'm going to start it at 0. OK, so huh. well then, if I just did 2k, the first term would be 0. So I guess that would work. But we, we could also do this. Because then it would just be 0, which doesn't really change things. But what if we did this, 2k plus 2, and then we stopped it at 49? Do you agree that this would give us the exact same sum? It would, because we would stop at 98 when we put in 49. That would stop us at 98 plus 2 would give us 100. So this is a different way of writing the exact same sum. Right? And, and you could go on. We could ostensibly write an infinite number of different summation notations for this one sum. So a lot of what we do here is try to pick which one is best for our specific application. Let's look at B. We have 3 plus 8 plus 13 plus dot 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 plus 63. So let's start this one at k equals 1. All right, so k equals 1. And why don't you pause the video and try this out on your own? See if you can fill out the rest of that sum using the sigma notation. Okay, well again, there's many different correct answers. Um, I'll present one of them. How about 5k minus 2? If we put in 1, that gives us 3. If we put in 2, that gives us 8. If we get put in 3, that gives us 13. So that's looking pretty good. We just need to figure out where to stop it. So if we put in 10, that's not quite enough. 11, 12, that's not enough. How about 13? 13 times 5 is 65, minus 2 is 63. So let's stop it at 13 here. There you go. There's one representation using the sigma notation. There are others. Next, let's look at evaluating sums when they're given in sigma notation. OK, so this asks us to evaluate the sums written in sigma notation. For part A, we have the sum as k goes from 1 to 4 of k squared. And it really just comes down to putting in, starting with 1, putting it in, evaluating it, and stopping at 4. So we have, what, 1 squared plus 2 squared 
plus 3 squared plus 4 squared. All right, we started at 1, we stop at 4. Now we add all these up. So this gives us, let's see, 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16, which comes to 30. So this notation may look a little intimidating, but it represents something really quite simple. Why don't you try B? We have the sum as P goes from 1 to 5 of the quantity 2P plus P squared. So pause the video, try it out, see what that evaluates to, and then we'll do it together. Okay, did you get 85? I think that's what that should come to. Let's see, we plug in P equals 1, we get 2 times 1 plus 1 squared. And then we plug in 2, 2 times 2 plus 2 squared. And then we plug in 3, 2 times 3 plus 3 squared. Plug in 4, 2 times 4 plus 4 squared. And finally we plug in 5, 2 times 5 plus 5 squared. Okay, it's all arithmetic from here on out. Let's see, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 6 plus 9 is 15, plus 8 plus 16 is 24, plus 10 plus 25 is 35. Add those all up, well 15 plus 35 is 50, plus 24 brings us to 74, plus 8 brings us to 82, plus 3 brings us to 85, so indeed 85.